Thank you, Ted. Thank you, worship team. And thanks for being here. It's always an encouraging uh, moment for me on Sundays when uh, people show up and uh, are in a spirit of worship. And so as we go into a continued learning about our Lent series and countdown to Lent, Lent is beginning this week. And so it will be an interesting journey for some of us who have never really entered into Lent before. The first week we spoke on on the idea of what is Lent, and we understood, and even as Ted just prayed, Lent is an opportunity for us to enter into the passion of Christ through uh, any means possible. Very similar to the Advent season as we count down the days to Christmas, Lent is an opportunity for us to count down the days to our Savior's sacrifice. So if you want to open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 17, As a church, we've been following through a lectionary journey, just discovering some of the the universality of the church and beginning to join in on what God is doing, not just here at 383 Hampton Road, but around the world in the church. I want to also share some exciting news. Some may know of this through maybe social media or through news. There is a work of God that's occurring right now in university cities throughout uh, the United States, and it's trickling uh, around the world. A place called Asbury, Kentucky, if you've never heard of this place, Asbury University, um, has been broken um, or has broken out in, in a place of worship and, and revival. In Asbury, Kentucky, right now, they are continuously worshiping. For the last 10 days, after the Wednesday worship service that they typically have, they, the worship team just kept playing and playing, and they've been playing now for 10 days, and, and worship and repentance, and God has broken out not only in, in Kentucky, but um, around the United States and in the places of Canada as a uh, group of pastors in Atlantic Canada, we're going to be trying to gather and trying to bring up that, uh, that, uh, that rhythm or that, that flavor of what God is trying to do here also in, in Atlantic Canada. So we're joining in with the Universal Church, and I believe God is doing something special right now, and I believe that Lent is going to be part of that journey. So Matthew chapter 17, verse 1, a story that the lectionary brings us is this story of transfiguration. It says these words, After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then they appeared, there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I'll put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son who I'm, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up and saw no one except Jesus, as they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised up from the dead. Very interesting story, and it would have been amazing to be an eyewitness of this story. Jesus takes up onto the mountain uh, Peter, James, and John, three of his closest friends. And they witness something of, of a miracle of such. Then, of course, the, the appearance of Moses and Elijah would have just added to the awe moment. Such an awesome moment to, to record into history. Jesus is changed in this moment, transfigured before them. Peter's first instinct, though, and a lot of human instincts, is, is this. We've got to capture this moment. We've got we to stay in this moment. We've got we to box Jesus up. Jesus, you want a tent? We can, we can, uh, we can set up shop here, and we could just stay in this moment. Or like Jesus in this moment says, no, we've got to go and do and change the world through this. Jesus was changed. 
And he wanted to share that with the world. So as we go into this season of Lent with this story in mind, I want to go into it with a, a, a heart of prayer. This heart of prayer is such that it changes me personally. And not because I'm partaking in Lent, but because Jesus will change me because of my journey through Lent. So the first key point is this. As you think about Lent, the first key point is this. Lent will not change you. It's important for us to understand that if you go into this journey and you begin this journey on Tuesday going into Wednesday, Lent, this 46-day journey, will not change you. But I believe God will change you during Lent. And it will allow you to be transformed. It will allow you to be transformed if you allow it to. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. A popular scripture, and as Stephanie talked about the, 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 the scriptures that we may have memorized early on in our relationship with Jesus, this would have been one of them for me. Where Paul says these words, Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So going into this journey of Lent, my first instruction to you is pray. Pray about this. If this is something that God wants you to partake in, I want you to pray about it. If this is something you feel you want to jump into, I want you to pray about it. If this is something that you feel that has, you, you want nothing to do with, and that you really want to kind of check off the box, no, I, I prefer not to partake in Lent, I want to give you this one instruction. I want you to pray about it. I want you to pray in such a way uh, that God speaks to you about the next 46-day journey. And as you pray, I want you to listen. I don't want you to be praying where you just continuously just kind of speak on about the requests and, and, and the, the things that you want God to change. I want you to pray, and then I want you to listen. I want you to pray these words, God, how do you want to use Lent in my life? And then use these words. What are the things that shift my attention away from you, God? What are the things that shift my attention away from you? What are the things that I wake up first thing in the morning and I think about right away? What are the things in my life that when I'm driving I think about? What are the things in my life that consume my mind? And I want you to say to God, God, I want you to transform that in me. So if something comes to mind, but you begin to say no to it, I want you to pray. God, why am I saying no to this? Why am I saying no? Is it because of selfish reasons? Pray and listen. So it's a 40-day journey. That's what Lent is. 40-day journey, and then the question is, well, why is it 46 days? And, and for us as followers of Jesus, we always focus around the 52 Sundays of the year as a celebration. And during the season of Lent, it's an opportunity for you, if you choose, to take a pause on your fasting or take a pause on whatever you're, you're deciding to give up for Lent, and, and you can celebrate on Sunday if you choose. It creates a 46-day journey. Now, on Fridays, that's a little something extra. Again, as we enter into a Good Friday season, the Passion season, Friday's also a day to observe Good Friday for the next six weeks. Which leads to an interesting caveat that I didn't know about. I've never been a really big fan of 
uh, McDonald's filet of fish sandwiches. I don't know if you've ever had one before, but I didn't realize this until I began this journey of research that the filet of fish became a popular sandwich served at McDonald's fast food restaurants because in 1962, a guy named Lou Groen uh, was a McDonald's franchise owner in Cincinnati, Ohio, and Groen created the sandwich in response to a decrease in sales during the Lenten season when many Roman Catholics abstained from eating meat on Friday. Groen noticed that his sales were suffering because his restaurant didn't have any meatless options on the menu. He came up, to the idea, came up with the idea of a sandwich made with a fried fish filet, tartar sauce, and cheese, and a steamed bun. He pitched the idea at McDonald's corporate headquarters, and after some initial resistance, they agreed to test the sandwich at select locations. The filet of fish was an instant hit and quickly became a permanent menu item at McDonald's restaurants across the country. And just keep an eye on some ads over the next little while. You'll begin to see filet of fish begin to be marketed. I had no idea. So today, the sandwich remains a popular choice for customers who are looking for a meatless option or who simply enjoy the taste of the sandwich. The uh, success of the filet of fish inspired other fast food chains to do the same thing. Lent changes things. It could just change you. So that's Good Friday, the idea of over the next six weeks, and then again, Sundays celebrate. Maybe it's a time off. So how do we celebrate Lent? Really important question for us to think through. Again, I want to reiterate this. This is not something I'm instructing you as a pastor to do. This is not something that I believe as a church we, we need to do. But it's something I believe that could be used to change us. So this Tuesday, between 5.30 and 6, we're going to be serving pancakes this idea is the opportunity for us to kickstart th this season of Lent and also a great opportunity to fundraise. Some questions come to the mind. Well, what is Shrove Tuesday after all? Well, some are familiar with the idea of Mardi Gras, right? Well, it's not exactly like that that we'll be participating here at this church. You might have to go to New Orleans to fully experience that. But it is just like the French words say, Fat Tuesday, the last day of feasting, before fasting. The origins of Shrove Tuesday can be traced back to the medieval Europe where it was a day of confessing sins and being absolved before the start of Lent. Shrove is past tense for the word shrive, which means to confess one's sins and receive absolution or forgiveness. So this Shrove Tuesday, we're going to partake in this journey and as part of the preparation for Lent, Christians were expected to use up all of their rich foods in their household, such as sugar, butter, and eggs, which were traditionally given up during Lent. So pancakes became a popular way to use all of these ingredients, and so Shrove Tuesday also became known as Pancake Day. I had no idea. And maybe some of you did, but now a lot of you guys are enlightened to this idea of what Shrove Tuesday is all about. And so again, the big part of this whole Shrove Tuesday is this confession of sins, of starting off Lent on the right foot. And so at 6.15, we are just going to gather in the fellowship hall, and we're going to just have a quiet concert of prayer, and I'm going to close off with a time of reflection and prayer, and we're going to begin the journey together. And then on Wednesday, over in the prayer corner, We've been praying on Wednesdays at 10 a.m., and so we're inviting you to come for no other reason than just to pray to kickstart this journey and praying for everybody that's going to be part of it. Because Ash Wednesday is the first day of the Christian season of Lent, which, again, is this whole period up to Easter. Now, the origins of Ash Wednesday are very, you know, um, uh, foggy, but it's believed that the Christian church has been celebrating Ash Wednesday since the Middle Ages around the 6th or 7th century. And the practice of making, you know, you'll, you'll see the pictures, and I've been able to participate growing up as an Anglican, the, the ashes spread out on the forehead of, of all believers who participate in Ash Wednesday. The ashes are typically made of the 
palms from the previous year's Palm Sunday, which are burned and then mixed with holy water to form a paste, and the ashes are applied to the forehead in the shape of a cross as a sign of repentance mortality. Now, I'm not saying we're doing this on Wednesday. All we're going to be doing is praying for the, the journey to begin. But the use of ashes as a symbol of repentance and mourning is found in many ancient cultures, including the Old Testament of the Bible. In the New Testament, Jesus speaks of a repentance and mourning as a way of, to enter into the kingdom of God. To use of, the use of ashes as a sign of repentance and mortality was a, thus a natural symbol for the beginning of the penitential season of Lent. It's a really important journey for a lot of people. And as a church, I believe we can join into this universal movement. But for us, it really is about our personal relationship with Jesus and growing that. And for 46 days, really pouring into that relationship with Jesus. And whether it's uh, some sort of food you decide to give up, some sort of you know, clear brownish type of hot liquid that you would purchase every single day at Starbucks or something that you might pick up at Tim Hortons, or whatever you do on a consistent basis that you probably don't think you can live without, maybe that's it. But whenever you think about this thing, whenever it comes to mind, it's an opportunity for you to practice, and I'm going to steal a little bit from a devotional material I've been sharing with the deacons over the last little while, this concept of star. That whenever you think about this object, or whenever you think about this item, or this uh, whatever it is, practice star, which is stop. Take a deep breath or take time. Appreciate life, appreciate God, and respond to God. So here are ways that you can observe Lent. So you can use this time to make a positive change in your relationship with God. Like take something away. Maybe an app on your phone. You know, it's pretty easy to delete apps. You hold down the app and it says delete app. I mean, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's one of the hardest things in the world to do. That little blue square with the F on it, you know what I'm talking about? You know, you, you just hold that button just for a little bit. And it says, do you want to delete this app? And for the next 46 days, you say, yeah, I do. Maybe it is an app on your phone or tablet. Maybe it's social media altogether. Maybe it's fast food. Maybe it's an addiction that you believe you have. Maybe it's staying up late and, and, and being really groggy and cranky in the morning. Maybe it's gossip. I don't know what it is for you, and I'm praying what it is for me. You know, I thought about several different things that I can give up. And, and each time I'm like, no way, God, I, I can't do that for 46 days. So I'm continually praying about it. But maybe it's not taking something away. Maybe fasting for you isn't taking something away. Maybe it's adding something positive to your life. Or maybe it's both. Maybe it's starting up a devotional. Maybe it's reading a book. Maybe it's going for a walk every day. Maybe it's doing a random act of kindness on a daily basis for the next 46 days. Maybe it's starting a Bible reading plan. Just starting something positive for the next 46 days and allowing God to use that. And the last, maybe it's your financing. Maybe it's your finances that you need to begin to say, okay, God, how, how can you use this? Because really, in the end, Lent came down to, to three opportunities, and fasting and finances were two of the ways. So this will lead us through this 40-day journey, 46 if you include Sundays, all the way up to Monday, Thursday. And this Monday, Thursday will lead us to Good Friday, and then, of course, it will lead us to Easter Sunday. But by that point, maybe God has changed you. And maybe you go at, at, at Good Friday and Easter Sunday with a whole new outlook on who Jesus is in your life. But for me, my mind drifts all the time. 
And as I was praying this week about Lent and about this journey, my mind drifted again. My mind's been thinking a lot about this March break trip coming up. It's a secret. I can't tell any of you where we're going because my wife doesn't even know. It's, it's a celebration for her 50th birthday. And, and this has really consumed my mind. And I'm really excited because all five of us, our three kids, get to join us on this trip. But for me, my mind, as I've been praying, has often shifted to this. Especially when I'm thinking about Lent, I, I, I then think about this trip. And then as I'm praying... I, I prayed these words and I wrote them down to God and I says, I need you to speak to me in the next 20 minutes about something other than my March break trip. I want you to say something about Lent and take my, my mind and clear my distractions. And so what I've been practicing over the last little while is kind of writing down what I hear God say. And I heard God say this to me about my March break or our family's March break trip. Because when I've been thinking about this trip, I've been thinking about all the things that I would want to do on this trip and planning it out somewhat that way. But again, this trip is really a trip, a special trip for my wife that she doesn't know about. And God said this, Brian, think about the trip and the way you want to plan the trip. These are God's words that I heard. Do you want to plan the trip with you in mind or Becky in mind? Because Becky's ways are not your ways. <laughs> Just like my ways are not your ways, Brian. And my thoughts are not your thoughts. But some things do line up. And there are equal things that we both have in common. Both God and I and, and Becky and I. And so when it comes to what you want to give up for Lent, I will be in favor of it or be favorable of, about it because you thought about it with me in mind. So what I'm trying to say is when I'm thinking about the trip, I need to think about the trip with Becky in mind. When I think about Lent, I need to think about Lent with God in mind. And then whatever I choose to give up for Lent, with God in mind, he will be in favor of it. So if you're struggling to think, what does God want me to give up for Lent? Just think about what God might want you to give up for Lent and decide on something. Isaiah chapter 55 has these words in verse 8, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. 1 Corinthians, Paul writes these words, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, here's the key, whatever you give up for Lent, do it all for the glory of God. Whatever you choose to give up for Lent, do it all for the glory of God so that whenever you think about that item, you stop. You don't fix the problem by caving to the desire for that. You don't Do anything other than stop, take a breath, and appreciate and connect with Jesus, and respond in faith and love and obedience. But for me, it might be a really difficult decision. But in the end, whatever I choose, I'm going to choose with God in mind. I still don't know what that is. I don't know what I'm going to give up, but I'm also going to try to add something positive. And I'm also going to look at our finances and say, hey, Easter offering is coming up. And as a church, we've sometimes struggled with even prioritizing what Easter offerings look like. I know in my tenure here, we often come to the, oh yeah, Easter offering is coming up. What should we put the Easter offering to? Those are conversations we have at the leadership board at the last minute. This year, we've actually pre-planned. And as we go into Lent, it's, it's, it's for you all to understand that we're going to be giving all of our Easter offering to our local schools. 
And so I'm excited about this journey. And then for the 40 days, you could say, hey, maybe every Tim Hortons coffee I don't drink this month or pick up, I'm going to take that, that, that money and I'm going to put it in a jar. And at the end of the, the 40 days, I'm going to give that to our Easter offering. So whatever it is you give up, maybe you're able to take your finances and say, I'm going to pour it back into the Easter offering. I don't know what that looks like for you. I don't. And then the other thing I struggle with is the ability to actually do it. Because i am uh, never been diagnosed with ADHD, but I, I know that my mind often drifts so quickly. And that those that know me well enough and have listened to me long enough know that Brian probably, I could probably guess that most of you have already diagnosed me already. Because I suffer with the ability to stay on something, and 40 days is a long time to go without whatever I'm thinking about doing. Because sometimes my inadequacies, my insufficiencies, my inabilities, my insecurities, my just thinking that I just can't do it because I'm inaccurate. Just, I don't have a whole lot of abilities to do this, God. So I had this conversation with God again, just the second piece of conversation I had with God this past week. And I said this to God. Hey, God, today I'm quieting my heart before you, but all I can think about is snow blowing. You know, like it was that day. But before I, I go out, I, I need you to deal with my anxieties and, and my insecurities, my inaccuracies, my inabilities. And I was personal with God in this, and I'll be personal with you guys. You know, sometimes I struggle with my ability to lead this church. And sometimes I have these dreams about failing the people of this church with a, a scattered message. And, and when I try to prepare a good one, my mind slips off and I, I focus on other things. That's who Brian is. I need your help in this area. So here I am and speak. And here's why I share this with you. Because a lot of you are probably in that place where maybe some of you are in the category as Lent just isn't for me, Brian. I don't want to participate. I think it's a Catholic thing. I think it's a, a thing for other people. There's some people in that category over here. And then there's other people in this category. Well, I'm not sure about this. Maybe I'll give it a shot, but, you know, maybe after 10 days, I'll, I'll, I, I, maybe I'll just give up. I don't know. And then there's other people that are just right into it. I'm kind of one of those guys that are in the middle. Because of my inabilities, my insecurities, my insufficiencies. And then God says these words to me. Brian, I want you to allow me to be in your abilities. Brian, I want you to be, I want to be in your securities. Brian, I want to be in your sufficiencies. I want to be in your finances. I want to be in your relationships. I want to be in your family. I want to be in your health. I hope you know what I'm trying to say here. God wants to be in everything in your life. When you feel inadequate, when you feel insufficient, when you feel like you have the inability to do certain things, when you have the inability to do Lent, what God is saying is I want to be in Lent with you. Not only do I want to be in all of the things that you struggle with, I want to be in Lent with you. That's the one I'm most excited about for the 46-day journey, that God will be in it, that my focus will not be on the things that I'm addicted to, the things that I desire, the things that I want, that God will be in Lent, and he'll be the one I want, the one I desire, the one I'm addicted to, that he'll be the one because he is in my Lent season. Father, as we go into this journey of Lent, as we enter into Shrove Tuesday, as we go through this journey of deciding what you want us to give up, I pray, Father, that you speak to every person, even right now, and you pinpoint that one thing, that one thing that will be a struggle to give up, but will also be a reminder every single day of my relationship with you. 
So God, I thank you for a season of Lent. I thank you for a journey. And I thank you, but it's not about us, that it's about you in the end and about you being in Lent in every person's life. In Jesus' name we pray.